we're live with the Black African Infrastructure Organization, and we're dealing with nationhood for dummies. Uh, for those of you who are with us for the first time, Black African Infrastructure Organization, we are a collection of women and men for one common cause, and that is we are a non-denominational group, and we are here to um, we are here to uptake the goal of attaining land, infrastructure, and nationhood here in America as well as off the continent. But we have a unique take because our headquarters is to be off the continent and that which we build in America would be satellite cities. We have come to the conclusion that the nation within the nation concept will not work in 2015. So we understand that the only way for us as black people to circumvent or to survive, I should say, I'm sorry, to survive police brutality, to survive eugenics experiments, to survive black-on-black crime, to survive ignorance that's within the schools and all the other issues we have, as well as to educate our people, to bring our people back to the high black society that we started and everybody came from us. We understand that the only way that we can do that is to establish our own separate nation, state, and territory and to build land, infrastructure, and nationhood. We also understand talking points that we as a people have been using for years don't work anymore. We're not going to argue that this person's religion or that person's religion is the reason why we can't do it. We're not going to argue that it's light skin versus dark skin. We're not going to argue that the black woman has sold us out or the black man has sold us out or all the people have sold us out. We're not going to argue that anymore. We're not going to argue that the white man is holding us back from this, that, and next thing. We understand that today. What we are here to do is we are here to offer a real solution. I myself, Minister Dell, Brother Dell, I came to this conclusion um, a couple of years ago, and it was an evolution that started on Blog Talk Radio, where I first came on Blog Talk Radio to basically fight for black organizations' right to live in America. And what I began to see is after so many years of being a street town, and you're talking 15 to 20 years, of being a street pounder and a door-to-door goer and the activist and the person that dealt with, you know, the youth and, and all that other stuff, I realized that everything we've done or have tried to do have basically been circumvented in America by the various different organizations of a nation state that is trying to survive. You have to understand that you're in a hostile host country and this country is trying to survive. It's going to try to survive at any means necessary. So the Republican Party, right-wing radio, Fox News, all of these entities exist to help this nation state survive for, with, and, and basically in support of the Caucasian man being white folks. We as black people are here as subservience. We are here to help, and we are here to help to build their infrastructure, continue to till their land, and to claim their nationhood. And the thing is, if you are a revolutionary, a reconstructionary, or you're just a person that wants to have fun and you're down with Renaissance, then you must agree that that is a hell no for you and I. We need our own land. We need our own infrastructure. We need our own nationhood. We need to be able to say that we have our own running water. We need to be able to say we have our own electrical um, electrical system, our own uh, Internet and data system, our own everything that everybody else has, we need to be able to say that we have our own. And until we can say that, everything that we are talking about, everything that we are debating, everything that we are trying to educate others on doesn't mean a goddamn thing. Land, infrastructure, nationhood, that's all that matters. That's all that will matter. And so this is how we arrive at the topic of the show today, nationhood for dummies. Because I'm not calling you a dummy. And I hope that you wouldn't call me a dummy. But the thing about it is this. If you, as a person who loves blackness, love revolution, want to establish your own nation state, are new to this whole concept, we want to start from ground zero. We want to let you know where you should start. And I'm not saying that we are the foremost authorities on it, but each and every one of us in our corner have studied nation states studied the creation, the rise and fall of nations. We studied uh, uh, the continent of Africa. We studied the continent of America, Japan, China, places like that, and how these nation states got up and how we can do it ourselves 
because there's a lot of people out there that will confuse you just throwing darts out there in the uh, sea of abyss saying, well, we need a nation and we need to build a nation. And when it all goes down, are you going to bang on this crack and stuff like that? You I mean, listen, I'm not saying that that's not true, but what I am saying is that's very vague. We're here to break it down for you because this is all we do. We are a group of men and women, again, focused on land, infrastructure, and nationhood, and we today, from our different disciplines, whether it be the food industry, whether it be myself with the security industry and electronics, whether it be in scientific, finance, insurance, you know, IT, whatever you think of, black African infrastructure has that within us. We have the talent to build a nation. We have the talent to build infrastructure, and we have the talent to then force everybody to recognize our nationhood. And all we want today is to basically take you from ground zero. So just like if you were for me, for instance, I am getting ready to get into the um, the networking field, and I'm going to have to take my, um, you know, CCNA and CCENT and stuff like that. So I have the book CCNA and CCENT for Dummies. And basically these books take the stress and the anxiety of getting into a new field away from me. It assumes I don't know anything, and it speaks to me from a level but doesn't make me feel bad. Well, that's what we're going to try to do for you today. And so I'm honored to have all four of my brothers with me today. Um, I think that maybe Chef Rob will call in. I'm not sure. I hope he does. But either way, each of these brothers will offer you a solution, and I will offer you a solution. Um, what I'm saying to you is not that we will offer you separate solutions, but we all are pieces of a whole. So I don't want you to think that we're just saying, well, Kyle is saying something different than Daoud, Daoud. What you're going to find is we all have the same kind of rhythm going through us, but we all express it differently. I have my brother here, Earl, Brother Earl. I have Brother Holt, Mr. Holt Sism. I have Brother Kala, and it's me, Minister Dell. So the first person that I want to bring in is I want to bring in Brother Earl. Brother Earl, are you Greetings, here? brother. Yeah, I'm here. Greetings, how, brother. How, how are you? Doing? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. fantastic, brother. How are you doing? Uh, well, good to be on this line again. Always good to speak with the brothers. Yeah, likewise, likewise. And I really enjoyed our conversation earlier today. I feel spoiled because I talked to just about everybody this week. And I'm on a high. Okay, so brother, let's let's get on into it. So, what you were talking to me about earlier, you were talking about the importance of starting a fund to make sure that we had enough capital to do what we're trying to do to establish a nation state off the continent. And that, to you, is making us for dummies. Would you care to elaborate? Okay, the, I've always emphasized that uh, the one thing that um, that is required is going to be money. No matter how you go about this, no matter what plan you decide to go about, no matter what direction you choose, you're going to need money. And I know that blacks in America have been burnt plenty of times with their money. So I understand the apprehension when people start telling you to donate money and you got to build a fund. But what you have to remember is that if you want and you anticipate building a nation in on the continent, for African Americans, you know it's going to take money. Now, yes. I'm not asking you to give your money to such and such organization. You can start your fund personally. Now, that that's what you can do until everything is up and more in a concrete formation, until you get more comfortable with what's going on. But the the reality is that it's going to take millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars to build nation that we want, because we're not talking about we're going to go to Africa and we're going to all live in mud, in mud huts and we're going to just right. walk around and eat berries. No, we're talking about a right. modern first world nation built by black right. men and women in Africa for the benefit of the diaspora. So right. that is going to require hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, the thing about it is that it seems like a daunting task when you say hundreds of millions of dollars. But what I found all funny is that with 10, just 10,000 committed black people who are committed, let's say, within the next five years, because I know black people, we're not rich in America. Within the next right. five years, you're committed to have your own personal fund of $10,000, not $10,000 for your family, not $10,000 for your retirement, $10,000 set aside for a fund strictly for nationhood in the next five years. If you have 10,000 people that do that, 
And 10,000 out of 40 or 50 million is not a lot. If you have 10,000 people committed to do that, that right there is a $100 million starting fund right there. Right, and right. what you can do with that is not – we're not talking about just going over there and purchasing land. What you can do with that is you can uh, offer assistance the same way that other nations offer assistance to African countries in the form of loans, credits, or anything like that. And if you have industries already that you have back in America – contributing also to that fund in the terms of, like, like I'll just make an example, like how you had Apple with the record uh, quarter this, this last quarter of $18 billion. If you had an African industry, uh, African-American industry behind you coming from Africa contributing to that, then you right. have something that African nations will covet. And then when you go over there to talk to them about what you want to do with land in their country, their eyes and ears open, and they're more receptive to what you have to offer. If you just come over there talking about what they owe you because of the slave trade, um, right. they're not going to be receptive to that. But if you come over there offering to assist them in making their country better, then you have a better platform in which to build upon this nationhood thing. And that's why I always, or that's why I feel that the first thing that you have to do is establish that fund. And right. the thing about it you can do is you can, you can start purchasing small parcels of land in whatever country you decide to settle in. And you can do the same thing about purchasing assets here in America where you know that the economy is stable or more stable. And then you right. can have businesses that will throw off revenue to contribute to the nation. So when you do move over there in mass, or your pioneers go over there, you can they don't have to worry about are they going to be funded, are they going to starve when they get there, do they have to do everything. They have the backing of a quote unquote nation behind them already in terms of finance. And that's why I right. think that building that fund is the most important thing that you can do to start off. Okay. Well, thank you, brother. Um, you definitely laid it down, uh, definitely. And uh, not much more needs to be said behind you. I, I agree. Um, you know from listening to my show in the past what I've said, that for us to build any kind of infrastructure, you need grown-up money, strong money. You know what I mean? We don't need five, six, seven, seven thousand dollars $7,000. We need millions. But everything yeah. has a start. And so, therefore, um, the collection of talent is one thing, but the collection of money is also at the utmost, and that's something that we need to really, really get started on as a people and rally around. We rallied around so many silly causes over the years, and then so many people have promised us and then deliver. I just think that um, the the goal of nationhood is the final solution, and it's something that we all should uh, invest in, the goal of nationhood, as well as in infrastructure. And can you please tell the people what your um, – understanding of, of infrastructure is? Because many people have different understandings of it. You know, you have your standard stock dictionary understanding of it, but what's your understanding of infrastructure and how do you think it would benefit black people in America? Well, I, I see it as a, as the practical things. I see it as the roads that you're going to use, uh, right. the, the airports, the seaports, the actual the fiber optics that you're going to lay for Internet use, all the right. things that you're going to need to use for the daily, for your daily living to make your daily modern life better. That is the right. thing. If you, if you don't have a modern power grid, then you're not a modern nation. If you cannot be plagued blackout every other day, you know, like some African nations are experiencing now, you have to be able to provide. I mean, it's 2015. You should be able to provide power for everybody in your nation at this point in time. Absolutely. And if you have a nation that has a lot of resources, as, as far as natural resources, and your first inclination is not to build the infrastructure, not only are you doing your people a disservice, you're doing your country a disservice because it keeps – the thing about America is they built the foundation, it foundational infrastructure first. And it, what this allows is it allows the people who are poor 
to take advantage of that infrastructure and contribute to the nation. If you don't have that infrastructure built down, then the people that are poor and disadvantaged are not able to contribute to the infrastructure of the nation, and your nation is dragged down because of that. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, good brother. Okay, I'm going to put you on. Oh, no you problem. Bring home there. Thank you very okay. much. Yo, listen, you, you definitely laid it down, brother. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm going to bring you back for comment after the other two brothers come on. All right. Peace and okay. love. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Peace and love, brother. Oh, is that you? Hello? I must have away from the phone for a second. Okay. Carlos? Oh, what's going on, Minister Dawood? Hello, Earl. Hello, everybody that's listening. Hello, uh, 13 Revolution Radio. This is the Call of Genesis of the Voices of Call of Nation Radio, one of the many brothers of Black African Infrastructure Organization. I am honored to be with this uh, distinguished group. And uh, like I said, you know, this is uh, a long time coming. We all had different paths, but we all end up right here, you know. Right. So I, I, I'm happy to be with this group, and I'm happy. To, I'm humbled. I'm happy to contribute and just be one of the many foot soldiers in this uh, endeavor that's going to last the rest of our lives, you know. So no we're, like we're 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 a brotherhood forever, you know. We're going to see right. this thing through. You know, right. We're going to see this thing through. So my 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 take on uh, land infrastructure nationhood is this. As I said in my show the other night, right? Um, <laughs> one of the things that's peculiar about our history, right? I was uh, disturbing. I try not to do this sometimes, you know. I watched uh, a, a, another documentary on Black Wall Street massacre. You know, I get so angry, you know, and it clouds my thinking and judgment, you know. And then I got to calm down and cool down and stuff like that, you know. But think about this. We settled in Tulsa, Oklahoma, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, black people we settled had a piece of a property. And see, let me t- let me tell you, let me put it to you like this, folks. You know, black people doing well is should be the norm. That shouldn't be the exception. It should be the norm. Right. We should all basically have nice neighborhoods. We should not have crime. We should not have poverty. We should not have self hate. When you have all those things, something is wrong. It's not the norm. But what television right. is, is, is uh, we we've conditioned to believe is it's the norm, so we just deal with it. How in the world? And I'm going to get back, get on the topic. How in the world can you have someone like Al Sharpton, after all those years on the streets, you know, telling us this and uh, fight the power, this and the other thing, gets on his television show and says, "I believe in this country that everybody have a fair shake." I mean, are you kidding me? You know. So sure. in other words, basically, uh, uh, there's no uh, America. Is basically absolved from all his crimes and his sins. We're supposed to forget about all that. Now the problem, the thing about Black Wall Street, right? We built this, uh, a community, but we had no way of protecting it. Part of the thing of having infra- land infra- infrastructure is this: when you would have land, right? You're a sovereign entity. When someone goes to attack you, you can respond in kind with your army, your military, and you're justified. You have rules right. of war. Somebody can't just invade you. Land is your protector. Since the dawn of mankind, everything has been about land. No group of people uh, 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 will willingly give themselves uh, uh, authority. Look at the, uh, the, um, the English when they were trying to take over Scotland. You know Why, why was that so important? The Scottish didn't want the, the English coming in there, funneling women, doing what they, what they will. They said, well, what's the big deal? This is the, because they could. So therefore, you have to fight the English. Why? To make sure they don't come in your land. Now, once you have your land, you can set it up how you want to set it up. You know, when you someone can invade your land or someone has power over your land, then they also controls the uh, the criminal element in your in your land. They control the women. They control everything about you because you have no control over the context of what you live in. So establishing establishing yourself a land and a sovereignty, and the most important word is dominion. 460 years we've been in America, we have no dominion over land. Think about that. Right. We have no domain, no dominion. Some of the soil we sit on, right, is controlled by somebody else. We have no control over the laws that that govern us. So, therefore, yeah. anybody could basically come into where we live at, no matter where we are. We can't hide from the white man here. That's why our right. neighborhoods are being regentrified. That's why our neighborhoods are being flooded with drugs. Drugs and crime are no accident in the black community. They're done by design. 
Right. The, the right. negativity you see in, in black America, the television, everything, that make you feel bad about yourself on television, everything, the news reports that keep uh, bashing you every day. Every day we hear about stories on the Internet where white people doing outrageous stuff, but it never makes the news. But every time we look around, they, they, they beam in their programming to destroy us from within. Now, I, right. you ask yourself this question. What if we were, uh, we were, what if we were like Japan? The Japanese carefully monitor everything that comes through the Japanese television system. Why? Because they know it will affect the, the social fabric of the country. Here, they do open warfare on us on our own thing. They even get us, our own people to pay us to do it. Lee Daniels, the Empire TV show, they, they deliberately uh, uh, put up negative images to destroy us. And we have no filtration. So when you have your own nation, it means you have your own news network. You have your own satellite, your own TV program. You have your own censorship. You control the culture in the context of what your people are seeing. You can right. get rid of colorism in black America. <clears throat> you can show your own, you can create your own images. That's the benefit of having a nation state. And the only reason why you can have a nation state is you have to have land. And to, to, to build that land, you have to have infrastructure. To, to, to maintain that land and everything, you have to have infrastructure. You have to modernize it. And, it, and let's be honest, like Earl was saying, it costs. Now, I took a different approach as far as infrastructure is concerned, right? Earl's right. Yes, mm-hmm. you do need money. You do need people to make money. That, that part I agree with. But the, the beauty about this is this. And the, the sad part about all this is this, is we have a lot of people that are nationalists and everything. You cannot have unless you want. This getting ready right. to be this year. I think Malik Zudu, Shabazz, and all these people are going there meeting with uh, the Pan African Zanius people. Some some pan, uh, pan world Pan African thing, whatever it is. You know, uh, another waste of time event. You know, and no one ever says, "Wait a minute here. If we're going to build a Pan African movement, if you want to unite Black people in America, why don't you? Why don't we have this state, this territory?" That African Americans control, that we can bring our own people on, and that we can build uh, build uh, uh, with different international institutions, so we can build our infrastructure. For example, for example, when you have a, 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 a land, right, right, a land. This is how land goes, right. If you have land, right, land just sit there, right, no value. But the moment right. you say, okay, this land is going to be uh, populated by African Americans, guess what? The, guess what happens to the price of the land? It goes up. Why? Mm-hmm. Because now the land has now, now the land has value. Now the land has value. And then what mm-hmm. happens when when that happens? You're going to have banks. You're going to have international insurance companies. Everybody will have to will have to they will, whether they want to or not will have to try to get in there because the world balance of commerce and everything hangs in a balance. So you're going to have all these different international companies, uh, international monetary fund. You're going to have the World Bank. You're going to have all these other people basically trying and a, a private bank, the BRIC nations, trying to loan you money to build build roads and everything like that because they know houses are going to be built, railways are going to be built, stores are going to be built, industries, industrial estates, all those things because African Americans are first world people. So we have a first world consu- consumption level. So in other words, basically, if we just do the basics. In our na- in our late nation state, I say build a, a nation state, but basically build it like a, a, a modern but modest. In other words, basically, not everybody we can't build a, a nation a, na- a city state like like we do in America. Where we have sprawling suburbs. We might have to build uh, cities where we have more condominiums and compact living. You know that saves on infrastructure costs. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And then over generations, you sp- expand out. But New York City, most of the people lived inside the city, and then they expanded out over after a generation. We might have to do the same thing, you know, which is per- perfectly fine, you know. So people say, well, so well, you might have to, we might, you might have to live in a condominium. You might have a high rise tower, you know, a high rise tower can house more people than trying to build rows of housing. But then you might have a rows of housing, but they might cost a little more. All these things in infrastructure is when you put the private sector out there, you're going to have people, uh, uh, people out there. Building the nation is not going to be the problem because people know they're going to get return on their money. That's the difference between us in, in Africa, where you got people still living in, in third world conditions, you know, and they don't have education, money, and everything. But if you say you're going to pop, send, send populate the people with people who have a lit, at least a, a basic education, that means they have basic skills, that's supply-side economics. The more you supply some, something with, uh, with people, with resources and ideas, that's, that, that, that's how the economy grows. 
And then not only that, you've got also another thing. You've got people coming over who are businesses, black people with money, you know, and then you got other investors. you got other things. So, therefore, the idea of the nature state will definitely uh, – will. All you have to do is sell the idea to the, to, to the average black person and say, yo, this is what we're going to do, you know. So um, that's what so I wanted to say, say about that. You, you wanted to talk about manifest destiny. Give us a, a, yes. a couple of um, – you know, give us a little bit on that. Okay, what a manifest destiny is this? Uh, when the Europeans first came to the shores of America, right, they had a manifest destiny. They wanted to go to the, first of all, the Appalachians. Then it was basically through the Louisiana Purchase, and then it was basically to, um, to uh, 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 through tech, they took Texas and Mexico and California, and they finally, the Pacific Northwest, and they took uh um, 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 they, they took to the to the west. That's sea to shining sea. That's the manifest destiny. Right. Then basically the United States expanded into Pacific. They went to Alaska, and then they took Hawaii. They were settled in Hawaii, uh, the Philippines. That's manifest destiny. It's manifest destiny is where right. you're going. In other words, basically, if you don't have a manifest destiny, let me give you another example. Which I, what, 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 one thing I, I discovered, I discovered why did the Europeans were so adamant about co- colonization of Africa, right? It was a manifest destiny. One of the reasons, and why did they go to Australia? Why did they do this? Why? Because if they don't have manifest destiny, they're going to destroy themselves. You think about it. You have large Ooh. numbers of people in urban areas, right? Angry, yeah. with nothing to do. You got fanatics on the streets preaching and everything. It doesn't take much for a spark or uprising before you have a revolution, and they learned that during the French Revolution. So therefore, let's have a manifest destiny. Let's expand around the world. And their manifest destiny was colonialism. Let's colonize. Why? Because if we get rid of these people, give them, give them another target to get their aggressions out and to expand and everything, we could save uh, our, uh, our, uh, our elite. You understand? Now, the black man gotcha. in America, the black man in America, after slavery, as a matter of fact, to tell you the truth, this happened before slavery. There was a man by the name of Prince Hall. Have you ever heard of him, Prince Hall? Oh, yeah. Prince Hall, uh, Prince Hall Masons? Mm-hmm. Out of Boston, okay? Uh, he came up with the idea in the 1700s of a manifest destiny of black. Because, first of all, in Boston at the time, there were several black communities made up of uh, blacks from Haiti, Jamaica, ex-slaves, free blacks. They lived in the Boston area. And they basically were masons, were stone masons, and they were skilled at building buildings and everything. Like they built uh, the, the, the area of Roxbury uh, in Boston, and so then, right. therefore, uh, Prince Hall had the idea that, uh, and, and then later on, Paul Coffey had the idea that we have to basically return to the land of our ancestors and develop Africa the same way the, the white people are expanding in America and subduing the Indians or whatever. We have to do the same thing in Africa. We have to basically colonize Africa and build, uh, 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 expand the continent and build an empire for ourselves and build a rebuild a black civil, a modern black civilization for ourselves. That was called manifest destiny. That was our manifest destiny. Our manifest destiny was to, uh, and people uh, term it, oh, the Back to Africa movement. That wasn't just going back to Africa. That was basically an, a, a mission. We're going to go back and we're going to build. And then you had the Republic of Liberia and you had Sierra Leone. And you had black people, uh, there was another black man who went to the Congo, established a settlement in the Congo. And you had some African Americans who settled in South Africa. People don't know that history. You know, the first uh, uh, church, black church in South Africa was made up by African Americans. You know, people don't know that history. And so, therefore, the idea of expanding in Africa and building Africa was our manifest destiny. And it came to fruition under the, uh, during the time of Marcus Garvey. People said, well, where did this come from? Well, that's always been there. It's never – Marcus Garvey didn't start anything new. That was always there. We need to go back and build our own nation. We need to be on our own land. We need to be among our own people. We need to civilize Africa. We need to kick the colonialists out of, out of Africa. We need to, That's manifest destiny. That's where we're going. Okay? Okay. Now, I got you. Uh, I got you. Um, hold on a second, big brother. Uh, let, let me see if, if – hold up. Are you there? I, I see his number, but uh, he, uh, I don't know, something happened. Something happened. Because I wanted to give everybody five minutes and then we going to get on into this, but... Uh, right. 
Oh, well, okay. All right, then. Um, okay. This is, uh, okay, all right. So, so, so then continue what you were saying. Okay, what I was saying was manifest. So manifest destiny is manifest destiny is where you're going as as a as a as a race. It has to do with race. Let's be honest. What you see in America is like you were saying so beautifully at the top of the show, where you were saying the the Rush Limbaugh's and all these people are there to protect America. They're not just talking right. about ISIS that's a threat. They're talking about us as a threat. And what are they protecting? Right. White the white man's manifest destiny. White nationalism. Right. Okay. Right. See the shining sea. There's not one inch of this continent or the country that they don't control. Right. That's their manifest destiny. Right. And yeah. so, therefore, yeah. how do you how are you going to beg another race of people when they're basically you asking them to give up their means of survival? Now, this thing with the Mexicans is going to cause. I know in the future this is going to cause a war. You know, with the Mexicans yeah. illegal flooding in here and everything like that. It's going to cause a war. Yeah. Yeah. You know. You know it's gonna cause it's gonna cause a war, and why should we be in the middle of it? Hmm. Our manifest destiny it. should be our own nation state. You know that's that's any black man that's a real man will say, okay, well, black man, what's your manifest destiny? I don't know. I'm American. It's like bump bump a bump. Yeah. You know, that's wrong. Hmm. Yeah. If, uh, what's the manifest? Oh, the nation within the nation. Bump bump a bump. Man. Wrong. <laughs> You know, a manifest destiny okay. is we find we need a nation state of our own, and those basically that uh, the the black community that's here in America that remains here are satellites, are affiliates of this nation state. We should have a nation state that speaks for us. You know, they should basically when a, a police officer pulls a black person over, they should think uh, not just once or twice, but five times before they do something. Before they hear from our counselor. <laughs> Well, this is going to damage diplomatic relations. They don't have to do it because why? Because we're a domestic issue. We're a domestic. Yeah. They don't have to do it. They don't have to provide jobs for us. They can gender right. frown. They can do whatever they want to us because it's a domestic issue. And the way the way the world is set up right now is the UN is okay. All of us nations, uh, we, we you won't we won't say nothing about those minority groups in your country. You don't say nothing about our minority groups. We'll handle our minority groups however we want to handle them. But the UN does have protection for minority groups and countries, but we gave that up with the civil rights movement. We want to become Americans. Oh, we're all right. Americans. You know, hmm. us pursuing a nation state tells the world that yes, we're ready to basically we're telling the white America, hey, look, do, this is your thing. Do what you want, but you're going to deal with us as a minority group. Well, you've been here. No, no, you brought us here as slaves. We had no choice right. in coming here. You know. We gave you guys the time, 50 years to get this together and, and assimilate us and everything. Now everything has gone worse. We've lost more than we gained over the last 50 years. Right. So now it's okay, time so to put nationhood back on the table. Right. Okay, let me let me give mine. I'm going to put you all on mute, and then I'll bring you back in when I'm finished. All right? Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, so brothers and sisters, this is, this is my corner of nationhood for dummies. So when we speak about nation and for dummies, we're going to start from the very beginning. And for me, um, one of the things about me that I always say is I don't talk about stuff that I don't um, involve myself in, and I don't talk about stuff that I don't work on. So for me, my area is security. Now, you know, I'm not one of those dudes like, you know, okay, but we have to stock up as many guns as we can. We have to learn martial arts, stuff like that. That it is definitely true. We do have to learn how to shoot. We do have to stock up. We have all of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just for survival and, and normal life, period. Not trying to do anything crazy or radical, but in normal everyday life, you need to learn to defend yourself. You definitely need to learn, you know, how to survive. You need to learn, you know, wilderness tactics, things like that. But when we talk about nationhood for dummies, for me, what I say is this. Whether you have a community that you put together that is for the interest of black people, and understand this, if you, in fact, put together a community in America, you will not control the infrastructure. You will not control the sewer system. You will not control the power system, power, heat, light. You will not control the data system. You will not control any of that. 
because you have to rely on the very people that you say you're separating from to do so. Some people say that we should do the, you know, try to get off the grid. I'm not an off the grid guy. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not an off the grid guy because I believe in technology. I believe in technology's ability to make man's life more easy and convenient. Now you may say, well, that's the problem. Life is too easy for us. Well, listen, if you point to, or if you look at the various times in history where we as a people faced Europeans and we didn't have technology, we always lost. I'm not down with that. I'm not down with it. You may be down with it. You may be thinking that there's something coming that's going to knock all technology out. And to me, I just think that either way, we could get into that some other time. So for me, I look at security. And what I look at is, is if you're going to have a, a, a community here in America, satellite communities, and you're going to have a nation state, then you're going to need to find some way technologically as well as physically and domestically to protect it. And the first thing that you need to know is there's two different things that you would think about when you think about security. That's threats and risk. Threats are people who want to do harm to you, harm to your property, harm to your intellectual property, and risk is people taking or damaging something that you have. These are the two things you have to think about. And so, therefore, in a nation state, we as a people, if we're going to have a discussion and it's going to start from the very beginning, which is nationhood for dummies. One of the very first things in the first circle of things that need to be discussed is how will you, how will you see, assess, and plan to deal with threat as well as risk? Because there will be threats. Listen, brothers and sisters, you don't think that you're going to build a utopia, do you? See, this is a discussion that I hear a lot <clears throat> in many different channels where it's like, if we had our own communities, this wouldn't happen and that wouldn't happen. Listen, the ignorance has been bred into us over the years, and there's always going to be people who don't rise above the ignorance. There's going to be people who's going to look to see if they can, you know, try to make a dollar out of 15 front. And basically, there's going to be people who are going to try to steal your property, and then there's going to be people who are basically going to work for the enemy, for lack of a better word. So the question now becomes, how do you detect these enemies? How do you prove that they tried to do what they did? And how do you prosecute these enemies? And to me, that's where security comes in. That's where physical security comes in. That's where electronic security comes in. That's where informational security comes in. That's a big market. If you're out there looking for a job and, you know, you don't have a criminal record, one of the biggest, fastest growing markets is informational security. How to secure data, how to encrypt data, how to make sure data is not stolen. Because every week you open up your news feed, you're going to see there's been a breach in Walmart's uh, basically uh, identity files. There's been a breach in Amazon's identity files, Target, and all of the banks. Now, a lot of black people don't worry about that because none of us have good credit, or a lot of us don't have good credit, I should say. I mean, I have decent credit, but a lot of us don't have great credit, and a lot of black people don't have any money. So you don't worry about identity theft. But you should you should worry about it because you should be on a come up trying to get good money and get good credit, which I am and a lot of the people I deal with are. So that's a real threat and a real thing you need to think about. And quite frankly, brothers and sisters, if you build a continent, I don't care where you build it. You could build it in India. You could build it in you know any indigenous nation where people are dark and they're friendly to you and I you are still going to have threat and you're going to have risk. You're going to have men and women who are going to look to get a dollar out of 15 cents. And quite frankly, they're going to look at your kindness and take it for weakness. They're going to try to infiltrate your data centers, your financial centers, and everything else. And they're going to be like, how can I extract money, extract information, knowledge, whatever I can use? Because let me just say this to you, and then I'm going to bring my other brothers in. I attended a conference sometime last, and they were talking about basically security guard services. Do you know that there's so much money in fraudulent security guard education that basically the United States can't stop it? There's so much money in it, they can't stop it. I'm going to do a show, maybe two or three shows from now. It's going to be called Corruption. How much is too much? How much does it become? They say, you know, they, they have this whole thing that they keep re- rehashing which is absolute power because of absolute cor- corruption. The question is, how much power, money, wealth, influence will make, will almost ensure corruption? 
Well, that's something that you got to think about that I don't think a lot of people are talking about. Because if you build on new land, you know, brothers and sisters, listen, when you think about building on the African continent, building in the American continent, or building any place else, if you're talking about building on fresh, good, mineral-rich, spacious, producing land, Anubhaj Muhammad talked about producing land. And so how much of the producing land is, uh, how much, <clears throat> excuse me, of the producing land owned by the original man or used by the original man? You know what I'm saying? And then it gives us a figure of 23 million miles. Listen, square miles, excuse me, listen. That's a question that you have to ask yourself. If you're going to build a nation on producing land and there's minerals, there's land, there's, you know, everything that you need to be prosperous, you know what I'm saying? If you study military history, you know all the generals. Yes, they looked at the strength of the troops, but they also looked at the supplies and how the supplies and the land would affect the people if the supplies and the land, if the land would yield certain amount of crops and certain amount of resources, how that would affect the people. When you look at that, that is going to cause corruption. I'm sorry. It's going to cause corruption. It's going to cause corruption in upper officials. It's going to cause corruption in the common man. And this is the kind of discussion that we need to have. It's not popular. It's not what you'll see on Facebook. It's not what you even see on blog talk. Because people just want to talk about raising flags and dealing with traditional religion. They do not want to talk about land, infrastructure, and nationhood. And more importantly to me and near and dear to my heart, how to secure land, infrastructure, and nationhood from risk and threat. Please take these things under consideration as we begin our discussion on nationhood for dummies. Thank you very much. And so at this time, I'm going to try one last time to see if Hold is here, because <laughs> I don't know if he, he is here. Brother Hold, are Hello? you there? Hello? Oh, you fantastic. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How are you, brother? I'm fine. I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> you sound tired. Yeah, but we're doing a 12-hour shift. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, but I'm good now. So, drop you into it. So let's come on in with it. Drop your part, my brother. Oh, about the um, nationhood for dummies. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, who's on the phone? Uh, it's just me. Um, Kyla and Earl, they're here also, but they're mute. Oh, okay. What's up, fellas? Yeah. Basically, like what me and you had spoken about um, earlier right. is that we have to get used to the concept of holding power yes. and knowing what it takes to run, you know, a nation with millions of people. Right. You know, right now, I think that what you hear a lot of um, – is people talking like nationhood is like a motorcycle club. You know, like right. you all you all go and get some leather jackets and wear the same patch and think the same <laughs> and everybody, you know, it's like, you know, I hear people say things like, well, if I have a nation, everybody got to think the same or, or we can't have people doing this because I don't approve of it. And I find right. that funny because you're living right now in a nation where there's a thousand people doing things. Millions of people are doing things that you don't approve of. Yet mm-hmm. for some reason, the nation is still operating. Right. It hasn't, it, you know, it hasn't spun off its axis or anything. <laughs> you know, the world hasn't right. blown up. You're living right here. And everybody's still doing the things that you don't approve of, but yet, you know, the 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 um, commerce and the economy keeps going on. Right. And that's the thing that, that we have to understand is that um, it's not about everybody thinking the same. What it's about is providing a government that will take care of its people. Right. The basic needs of its people. That's what it's all about. It's not about controlling people's individual lives and choices and what they do and all of that nonsense that people, you know, seem to 
dominate the airwaves now is mainly about having a good economy, equal opportunity, <clears throat> you know, quality of life. Right. Things like that. That's what nationhood is about. Right. Gotcha. So basically that's it in a nutshell. Gotcha. Okay. And can you give people a brief, um, because you you don't laid it down in your video already, so I know you have an expansive uh, understanding of that, but just give people a brief understanding of what we say when we say nation, uh, uh, excuse me, infrastructure. And nation is also, but infrastructure, because you're the first person I've heard, you know, basically explain infrastructure at length and tell them why it's non-denominational and it doesn't really, it trumps all the divisions that we have. Yeah, the infrastructure is important because once you have once you have that piece of land, um, building you know, like surveying the land to find out what the resources are that's on the land, and going about the process of building it, mm-hmm. that's where the jobs come in. As right. a matter of fact, um, Obama is. Um, He's been putting it out there about infrastructure in the United States of America as a way to gain jobs. Right. Because the infrastructure is crumbling, and so he wants to go about the process of rebuilding it. And in that process of rebuilding, you're going to create, you know, thousands of jobs. And it's the same thing with us. I mean, think about it. How long do you think it took to build New York City? And how many people had jobs during that time and for how long? Right. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like right. that's 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 the thing. It's like um and and like you were saying before, like nation like infrastructure is, is um secular. Right. It doesn't care about your belief system. Just like in right. New York. When you get, it doesn't matter, like, what your your religious belief is. You still swipe your Metro card. Right. You know, it's the, it takes money from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite sure, like, it, Muslim, he, you know, Hebrew, Christian, you know, like, all types of degenerates or whatever, as long as you can afford to get on that train, they will take your money. Right. Right, right, right. You know, hmm. and basically that's 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 it. It's like, um, as and in the process of that, and, and Kala probably will build on this. In the process of you cultivating your land and building your infrastructure, that's when your culture starts developing. Right. You know. Right now, we have a culture in um, our inner cities here in America. People always say, oh, well, nobody seems to care about the place that they live at. It's because they don't have any vested interest in it. They didn't build it. They were just put there. So they don't care about, you know, uh, messing it up or throwing garbage. But could you imagine when you, you had a hand in building the neighborhood that you live in? Mm hmm. Not only will you not point. mess it up, but you'll mess up anybody who tries to mess it up. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, so that's another uh, um, added bonus is that by, by having a vested interest in the place that you stay in, knowing that your 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 hands had something to do with the building of that building or that road or that highway or those streets and, and everything, you know that that makes you have pride, right? And when you have pride and you and you and and what you built, you protect what you built, right? So this is why land, nationhood, and infrastructure, land, infrastructure, and nationhood is just a no brainer at this point. Right. It's a no brainer. I mean, we can talk about building here in America all day long, and and fine. You know, if people want to do that or attempt to do it. It's cool, but you got to have some place that's your base of operation outside of the jurisdiction of the United States of America. 
Yes. You have to. And I, I mean, why I have to explain why we need that, that is crazy <laughs> to me. I mean, that should be self-evident. I mean, come on. Why do you think? Mm-hmm. Because we have permanent second-class citizenship here in America. Does mm-hmm. anybody, even the most hardcore pro-America black person, do they honestly think that at some point in time that we're going to be equal to white folks in this country? Hmm. And I would say really? Not at all. <laughs> not at all. But you know what, though, man? There's some people who think that because we're making a lot of babies, we're going to vote ourselves into that kind of power. Oh, yeah, we're going to take over, and then we're going to become the majority. See, what they don't understand is um, <laughs> white folks might at some point be the ma- minority in America, but their spirit will live on <laughs> through right. our mentality. Right. There you go. There we'll have a go. bunch of chocolate-covered white people here in America. Right. Right. I mean, we already got it now, but it, it, right. so I don't I don't understand why people think that just being like having the actual skin complexion of black means anything if you're still going to follow the same spirit and culture and philosophy of white folks. Right. Right. Huh. Carla. Sounds like you want to comment? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's up, Holo, man? Hey. <laughs> What's going on, brother? Hey, you What's know what you're saying? you always put it down, I love that. I love sarcasm, man. God, you know, sarcasm <laughs> is how you just literally destroy people, you know what I'm saying? They won't even come there what you're trying to say, man. It's like, dang, I don't want to go near that, boy. Yeah, you're right about that, chocolate-covered white people. You know, I was. Um, did you guys get a chance to re- uh, look at that video I posted? Of Sag Harbor in Long Island. Mm-hmm. Sag mm-hmm. Harbor. And now, now the people are saying, the white people are coming out there now, like, you know, well, what are you doing here? And it's like that was a prosperous, affluent black community for generations. Best kept secret. And they're like, well, they found us, you know? It's right next to the hand. Mm-hmm. And my whole thing is this. That makes it so Sag Harbor is now 65% black. Used to be 100%, right? Nice. I mean, those are nice. Beachfront properties, generations, you know, a best kept secret in Long Island. Now 65% white. Now that's basically what's going on. I give it another 10 years, it'll be blacks will be the minority, you know. And so, therefore, what, you, right. what, what I'm basically saying is this what I'm saying, those who think they're just going to build in America and everything like that, that's exactly what's coming because let me, let me say this, right? And I'm going I'm to say this, and this is going to put some clarity right here. White man has the money. When you got somebody that got hundreds of millions of dollars and white people, they and let me give you an example. White people may seem like they're bumbling and innocent, but they know they got power. When you got money, mm-hmm. they know they have the money that we don't have, right? And they they know they could buy any black person. They could buy your neighborhood. They could buy you out. They're buying up Harlem. They're buying up uh, um, uh, Brooklyn. They're buying up the Bronx. They're buying whatever they want. Whatever they want, they can have because they have the money. And it ain't a matter of time before you crack because there's no mechanism in place to prevent that. Now, when you have a nation state of your own, guess what you have? You have a government. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That says that will say hell no. No, you can't uh, buy that. No, the, we you have to have approval for that. And we, if it's not in the best interest of the, of the state of the government, it's not going to go down. No, you can't just move here. You see how a nation state with laws and your own creed and your own dominion protects you? That's just common sense. See, like I said, now we're starting to, and like I said, everybody in black, and what I, what I liked about that documentary was this. It's like, and, and, I'm not, and, I'm not, and, and I'm not crazy. I know majority of black people, and they said it. When you got black people talk, and you create a documentary and let black people express themselves, but I don't let them care about white people think, they'll tell you. They're like, well, we like going to a place where we, we're the majority. I own black Shangri-La. That's what words I was hearing. I was like, my God, I never heard that before on television. You know? And I'm saying to myself, millions of white people watching this, what's this going to tell you? And black people are sending a message out there. Yeah, the idea of black people wanting a nation or wanting to be around black people is still alive. You know, right. despite all that integration, despite all that propaganda and everything like that, no group of people, those same group of people want to be dominated and ruled over by another group of people forever. Right. 
It is, no it is not common sense. This is not common sense. And like, well, Jose, um, if you have black people say waiting on white people to become the minority, well, look at South Africa. Right now, they did a report. They said white people in South Africa are richer than they ever was. Black people feel like they're strangers in their own country. I and mean, we hope and I was talking about that the other day. Uh, strangers in their own country. They feel if you're the majority, and white people have the nerve to feel like, well, what are all these black people doing here? How can you feel like that in Africa? Now, yeah, we, if they do that, <laughs> if they do that in South Africa, it'll be like 500 years for white people. You even feel like what you're gonna feel. Well, we're gonna become the minority. Join Hispanics. Are Hispanics joining with you now? No. You know, nope. look what you know. You know what power. it is, Carla. What's we think mean? power is gonna come by osmosis. You know, yeah, we, we, we're we, not we, gonna we, get we, power by actually doing things to gain power. We're just gonna get power like incidentally. Oh, we oh, so we're gonna become the the majority, and then all of a sudden, white folks is gonna hand over power because hey, I guess it's more of us oh, yeah. than them. Uh, well, black bl- black people are the majority <laughs> in uh, New York. Black people are the majority of Detroit. Look how that turned out. You know exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, what, what example here? Atlanta, uh, D.C. All these other places, we were the majority. We had a black mayor. Wow, you know, we're on our way. We're moving on. Gary, Indiana, and we're not. White people still what control the infrastructure? They control right. the, uh, the municipal bond. You know, they did control the. See, uh, did you guys see the article that I posted? The Koch brothers are spending damn near a billion dollars in political campaign contributions. When you can get right. to the point where you can do that, then talk to me. Right. <laughs> Right, a billion right. dollars. I mean, that's crazy. Like, yeah, like, and it gets back to what you were saying, Carla. Like they have the money and they have the resources to buy whatever they want, including politicians, and buy this system. Right. Yeah, and, and, and this is and, and, like and, you know, they call, the they have they call democracy. People who listen to the show and 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 new people, or whatever, we're yeah. not. Dudes that are just saying the answer to all of our problems is to throw on some damn dashikis and just go back to Africa. That's not what we're saying. No. What we're saying basically is is that you need, we need, we all need to think about controlling our destiny because basically for me, what weakens the movement is the lack of money. Black men, black yeah. women with strong spirits. You know, you come up in the movement. This is the process that I see. You come up in the movement in your twenties. You need, you know, a nice young lady or whatever as a man or as a woman, you need a nice young man. You start having babies. So you're in the movement, you start having babies. Eventually these babies are going to need pampers, milk, food, whatever. Hello? Hello. Oh, Did you get cut off? Yeah, you probably got bumped up, probably, probably gonna call back in. Yeah. Yeah, like I was saying, um, so when you tell people when I tell people all the time, I said, Look, you know, this nation idea is basically like I said, America had a good run of it, you know. Um, the Republicans, right, they fought us every two foot away, you know, uh they didn't understand what they were up against. You know, I got Sorry, a civil yo, rights I got community. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I figured you know, that. Yeah, so basically the, the process is this. You start having babies. Once you start having babies and they start needing stuff, then that weakens your resolve because now you have a battle. Do you continue soldiering on for the cause or do you take care of your family? And if you ignore your family, yeah, well, you, you was a good warrior in the cause, but then you don't have any family, which kills the movement in and of itself because you was a powerful voice in the movement, but you have no descendants. And I said this before, and I'll say it again. We don't have second gen- uh, army of second-generation men and women that are descendants from those who came before us that basically just were ready to take on the mantle. Everybody that's, that, 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 that I know that came into the movement, we, 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 our mothers and fathers were not in the movement. We are all new. And so, therefore, unfortunately, what weakens the movement is the lack of money and the lack of resources. When you control infrastructure and, like Hola said, give jobs, as well as industries, and like Carla said, you know, when you control your manifest destiny, that in and of itself helps you to continue to soldier and fight on, that you don't have to worry about where. Because another thing is this. It's like we was taking a picture in the um, 
and the Schomburg, and Holo called Neo Incog Negro. <laughs> yeah, that's how you be. He didn't want to take a picture and be on Facebook or anything like that. See, I can understand that, though. I can understand that because if you're doing well for yourself and you, you know, you run the risk. I run the risk every day, man, of posting all of the flicks I post and stuff oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, bro, bro, man, like I said, I do the same thing, man, right now, you know, with uh, with my, my, my business right here. I have a lot of white clients, the steady old thing. But the whole thing, what I'm trying to do is, like I told Holt the other day, is this. You know, we're not going to be defined by the typical black movement. And also, my whole thing is this. I tell you, and I'm not care, I care what white people think, and I also care about what black people think. I don't like being uh, uh, stereotyped because I'm not like what they what people say. You say, oh, you're a nationalist. Oh, you must be one of those standing on they, they, what, all The image they have is somebody standing on a creek, speak on a down with America, kill, crack. And that's not me. You know, right. that's not me. You know, I'm somebody that can art- sit there and articulate any sort of uh, history. I can see, I can talk to you about the liberal point of view in, in America, the conservative point of view, the libertarian. I can see all those things. I can have an intellectual conversation with you, you know. And to people will say, well, geez, you know, um, you're such an intellectual. You're so smart. Why do you gravitate towards this black nationalism? I have people tell me that. Mm-hmm. I said, well, first of all, it's, it's the, the reason why is this. If you look at my history, if you really study black African American history, right? The real African American history, we were the norm. The people who right. had the manifest destiny like us, we were the majority. We were the norm. The people mm-hmm. that basically Martin Luther King came along and he was the creation of the white media. You know? Mm-hmm. Most black people had pride. That was called black pride. We had pride. If you don't want us in your stores, we don't want to go to your stores. We, if you don't want us in your school, we'll we'll build our own school. That's the way naturally that's a natural response to people that hate you. It is not normal to basically sit down and basically think about this. They burn Black Wall Street to the ground, right? right. I, Rosewood, Rosewood, Wilmington, Forsyth, Georgia, uh, uh oh. many other places in, in America, Detroit, uh, one of the worst race riots in history. All these things happen to us in the so so called uh uh after slavery. And I'm saying to myself, and not to mention all the lynchings and everything else that went along, the Scottsboro boys, all these things happened to us and everything, and we basically have basically had to uh, uh, say, well, the white man is so powerful. We look at his tall buildings. We look at his big banks. We look at his industry. It all is his infrastructure. Right. That's it. We're so smitten. We, I mean, let's be honest. When you go, when you're, you're from New York, right, when you drive across mm-hmm. that George Washington Bridge, man, what's the thing that thing you feel so inferior and insignificant? You know, and, you know, and you you see these big tall buildings, you see these uh, t- uh subways that go way down into the earth and whatnot. You see all this stuff. You see all this majesty. You see these beautiful buildings and these people out here that got this wealth, the money. You see this the white man civilization, and the whole thing is is you know that you are not a part of it. So you can do two <clears> things. You could basically be on the street corner yelling, kill cracker, this, that, the other thing, when she goes by and laughs, you know, because, like, uh, look what I got. He knows you're there. He knows, he knows, right. he, he knows, he knows. He, but he probably has more respect for those person that killed cracker because he knows what he's doing, he, what he's talking to them, you know? And then you got the right. black man who walks down Wall Street who's trying to pretend like he's white, like none of this happened, like he doesn't have a problem yeah. with slavery. But deep down inside, he's angry. Because well, what brings it out is when he tries to get a cab and whatnot, and a cab rides right by him. That reminds no, him brother. that you were that, nigger. That, that's a little bit too far. That's a little bit too far. What makes him angry is when he's in there and he's got to work four to five times harder than his white counterpart, you know, for the right. same amount and of money or even promotion. less. Exactly. And that stuff and is don't get tiring, that man. That that is very tiring. Uh, you know, oh, trying oh. to go when you kind of, see one of the things that that they've taken away from I, I, I've white folks, um, especially like when it comes to issues of of internal things that black folks have to do and whatever, they don't know how right. to deal with me at all because my mentality is I'm just not that into you. I'm right. not concerned about you. It's right. not about you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to mm-hmm. get my brothers and sisters to, to, to have that same mindset because they have elevated the white man to, like I said, like super villains. Like status. a god. Right. You know, like this guy is right. the master of the universe or something. It's like, no, most of the time you are giving this man more attention than he really deserves. Right, right. You know, when you're talking about issues of nationhood, what does that have to do with white folks? 
Nationhood is you getting a piece of land and developing that land, developing your system and your structure. What does that have to do with white folks? And if your mentality is that the white man can destroy everything, then why are you even fighting? What is, what is the, what's the point of even trying to do something? Just merge right. into invisibility with the white man. Right. Right. You know, but most men <laughs> is not going to go for that. Exactly. Because my thing is, exactly. it doesn't matter if if it doesn't matter. You can actually go out here and be robbed at any point. So what does mm-hmm. that mean? That you just going to go out and hand that people your money when you go outside? Right. <laughs> right. You know, so when I hear arguments like that, it's like people are trying to find excuses not to do anything. Mm-hmm. They just mm-hmm. want to stay in the same position that they're in. They don't want to build. They have no vision. Because think about it. If people had visions, we would be hearing a lot more shows like our shows. Right. Yes, if sir. people really had visions of nationhood, these shows would be dedicated to forms of govern- governance. Um, you have shows dedicated to infrastructure and how you build this, how you build that. How do you build a, a, a bridge that's up the code so that cars don't fall into the damn ocean when they ride across it? <laughs> yeah, you know you how do you how do you build a road? How do you build a seaport? How do you build an airport? You know, that's Brother Earl. What do you say, Brother Earl? <laughs> you mean it's like the show you put on? You put on, you post it on Facebook about why do women like bad boys? That's what they're saying. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yes sir. Yeah. <laughs> we keep we keep hearing the same content over and over, recycled. Oh, because these people have run out of of material. Right. Yeah. I mean, what they're gonna go, they're gonna start recycling a, a weaves and all this kind of stuff and everything. I mean, some things have been talked about. And, I mean, these are subjects that I saw on your show when I first came on the Internet looking for information. That I saw on your show, Holo, five years ago. It was like, I mean, these things are when, I mean, it just seems like they don't want to take the next step in thinking something to figure it out because, it's going to have to make you do something. See, if you just talk right. about yeah. social issues, you don't have to do anything because there's always going to be a, there's always going to be a different social issue. But if you start talking about nationhood, that leads that that is the end point. So once you already have the end point of we're going to have a nation in Africa, that's the end point. Now you have to figure out the steps to get to that end point. Mm-hmm. And when that when yep. it comes to that, people start shaking in their boots, and then they want to start talking about BS again. Because right. yep. I, you're hundred percent, you're hundred percent right, hundred percent right. I'm glad you see it. I thought I, I know Holup sees it, or Dawu see it, and uh, uh, Warlord see it, and Tom see it. I, I'm glad more people are starting to see this. When you start talking about nationhood, that means that you got to actually do something. You got to learn something. Yo. You know, <laughs> let me you have to let learn me let me give you all an example of this. I, and I, I know I keep using this as an example, and, and Minister hasn't seen it yet, so I apologize, Minister. But do you remember <laughs> Hero? Uh, remember in Hero yeah. when the two guys, when the two well. guys, <laughs> when the two guys were getting ready to fight, when Jet Li was getting ready to fight the dude, they would both close their eyes and they would envision how the fight would go. Mm-hmm. And then they start fighting. <laughs> you know, it's like you have to, when once you start. Um, envisioning the future. Once you start envisioning your goal, then the natural step is to start doing it. Go through the process right, right. of what you envision in your mind. And that's the yep. reason why you don't see those topics being covered, because these guys have no vision. True. Nope. They don't have a True. clue. True. They don't have a clue. It's just the same thing. Now, now we're, and that's why I'm so glad I'm proud of this group, right? We stay quiet. We we stay quiet. We sort of mum that we we gave it. We gave a little side thing. We chirped, and you know, we with the Ferguson thing and other. But we didn't go all out like these other people did. These people basically were out there saying, "Yeah, this is the uprising. This is the revolution." You know, you had these people out there. And I'm saying to myself, you know, I, I said to myself, the white oh, man knows. God, yeah. Look, you know, I got a time. We go, we go, we 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 look, look, we just have to placate them because by the time same thing happened last year. You know, I said, mm-hmm. look, they'll be mad until Super Bowl comes around or the basketball championship comes around. 
you know. Then black people go back to do it. So yeah, who's your team? What not? You know. And I'm saying, you go on the street, you say Trey Martin. They go Trey who? Who the hell is that? The one, the mm-hmm. one you were talking about, uh, Bert. And see, white Man. people got to, they're, they're, they're like looking down on us like a bunch of fools. Like We like, are living we, we in a time, time, we are living in a time right now where people are so desperate for attention that sex tape is actually an option for you. Yep. It's just yes, sad. So that's it's just that's sad. the time that we're living in right now. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just sad. It's just really, really sad. And and like I said, like uh, uh, like I said, with, with us is this. With us, we talk about nation. Like I told Hold the other day, um, when you when we have BIO, what I want to say is you're going to have a diverse pool of thought. You know, so long as you believe in nation as the ultimate goal, and we should have a republic in a nation of our own, and everything. There's a diverse pool of thought. There's going to be some that are basically uh, radicalized, uh, right, well on the right, hardcore, kill the. No, not kill, but being civilized. You know, forget white people. It's all about being black. Let's have a strong black thing. Then you got to have some people basically on the left where you say, look, we're going to have to basically have people in the country as 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 experts and everything like that. We're going to have to get along with the world, make peace with the world. That person just much a nationalist as they. Same thing they give to us. When you see white America, the white liberal and the white conservative are both white nationalists, you know? Mm-hmm. One of them says black you know, people will let you be a part. Does that your thing? Yeah. I opened up my Facebook page feed um, like this afternoon. I had to go do a service call. So when I come back, I open it up because I was going to, you know, type some stuff to your brothers. And across, come across my feed, I see this advertisement for this debate. And it says, Kemet on trial. I said, what? <laughs> so <laughs> I, I click on this bad boy and I blow it up. And it's Kemet on trial. The Hebrews... Versus, uh, versus the commissions, and you know, it, it, you you see, um, you see, the, you know, the usual suspects, and it's a big. I said, man, you know something? Because Holo kid, you know, can relate to this, and I think you can also call it. We were all WWF and NWA watchers when we were younger. Yes. Yeah. I said, God damn, is this where we at now? Now we, it's, this is like SummerSlam and Starcade, and you know. <laughs> You're gonna have a WrestleMania with conscious people. That's what you're gonna have. Yeah, I know, I know. That was funny. That was funny. I said, in the midst of all this, they're gonna have a debate on some stupid nonsense. I'm like, okay, you know, brother. But you gotta see the flyer, brother. There is mad people in this flyer, brother. It, it looks like it's gonna be like a bunkhouse brawl or a battle <laughs> royal. You know, <laughs> I said to myself, I said, damn. So where's NWA at? You know what I'm saying? Because that oh, the Royal Rumble. Rumble back in the day. Exactly, 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 and I'm like, God, this is what we have come to. We have come to the point where, and you should have seen, brother, there was mad people under there like, oh, I can't wait for this. I'm going to go to this and stuff like that, and I said, damn, so this is how you get attention now. If you put together something with a lot of people on the first card, it's going to be so-and-so versus so-and-so, and then they have to weigh in, you know what I'm saying? They have to weigh in just like in, in, in the wrestling days, and they, I mean, I don't understand it, bro. I really don't. I, I do not understand it. And I try my best not to speak against it, but when I saw that, I said, oh, this well, is too much. I, I, I understand it. WWE is in sports entertainment, and what we got is right. conscious entertainment. That's all. Right. Exactly. It's conscious right. entertainment. And they sell, t- they sell tickets to that, don't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Tickets? They have a pay-per-view. <laughs> They have yeah. pay per view. They have pay per view. They oh yeah, yeah, man. This is this is. I, I I really think we need to get a big ass ring, and actually have a freaking sub, a, a Royal Rumble where we have like you know like they had the buzzer go off and then in comes you know like the Moors. And yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. he wears your life one night, and they're all flying through the air one night. You know what I'm saying? You know, take the fans off. You know, oh my yeah. god, I can't believe. It. <laughs> you know, it, you know, it would be so it would be so uh, funny if it wasn't so sad that these brothers are so lost. Man, that's what that's what that's what basically not building a nation does. You know, you got these sick men, these black men that are basically got nothing nothing going for them. They got no women, they got no money, they got no anything. You got no respect in society. You know, and they're walking around with costumes on. You know, in their pajamas, talking about let's have a debate. You know. I mean, you oh know, you know, it's it's ridiculous, you know. Oh well, 
Anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there for a little bit of a uh, jest because when I saw that, I just couldn't believe it, bro. I was like, oh, my God. So either way, I guess... You know, the funny part of it wrong. is so believable. <laughs> That's the funny yes, part. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because, you know, something I, I believed, you know, when you when you was a child, you definitely believed that those dudes were actually slamming each other and stuff like that, especially when they went mm-hmm. outside the ring. So it's like when you see this conscious stuff, and that's the funny thing. These dudes come on Facebook and they post videos and they tell you, after the debates, we go out to dinner together. That's what they say. Mm. Yeah, it's so, a, so it's a, what it's are you uh, paying for? <laughs> You're paying yeah. for entertainment. You know, the Iron Sheik right. and Hulk Hogan went out and smoked a joint <laughs> after they did their match. You know, that's, that's true. all it is, yeah. entertainment. Let, 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 me, uh, let, me, let me say something here. Let me say something here. I said on the show the other night, I said, look, uh, it's going to be in four, in five years, it's going to be 100 years since Garvey made that speech in Madison Square Garden. A 100, think about that, 100 years. Mm. He said, we are the uh, race that's determined. Now, everybody else, the Japanese, the Singaporeans, they get their liberation and what not, and they're booming in 15 years. 100 mm. years, and we're still freaking talking about the same freaking thing. What does that tell you? That tells you mm. that some people, like Hope said many times, are comfortable in what they're doing. They're comfortable. They basically made uh, pimping the movement and basically uh, made slavery. That's what I said on my show the other night. I don't worship any icons. You know, I mean, basically, right. I'll take uh, what, what somebody say. I'll take what Garvey say. I'll say, oh, I, I like that, but I'll just, I don't need that. I'll take what Elijah, uh, Honorable Elijah Muhammad said. I'll take that. I agree with that. Just that other thing. I don't agree with that. I'll take what Mr. Farrakhan said. Okay, some things he said good. I'll take that. Okay, then run with it right here. I'll take Malcolm X. That's everybody we have to do like that. Because if it doesn't fit Carl, in Carl, our I got agenda, a question to ask you. I, I do from yeah. one of your shows, and I want us all to attack this, but this is, you know, you said this, and it knocked me on my behind. I thought about it for a while. One of the things you were saying, you were talking about why African countries are not developing a lot of them. You said, I think it was Nigeria, I want to say, I'm not sure. But you said this country cannot develop because you cannot develop a country at the same time if at the same time you're at war. And yeah, I yeah, find, yeah, oh, oh. if you pile a whole lot of let me just set it up for you, then I'm going to let everybody hit out the park. Now, remember, when we were, when Barack Obama first became president in like 2009, we were in the midst of two wars. We were in the midst of Afghanistan as well as Iraq to some degree. Even though they said the combat operations had stopped, they still was over there hard bodies. You know what I'm saying? Sending drones right. through the whole nine yards. So, so, over the course of Barack Obama's presidency, good, bad, or indifferent, whatever you think about him, there's some things he did deliver on his promises because he did bring yeah. a lot of troops home and draw down the troops. So, right. the war effort is nowhere near what it was when he first came into office. And consequently, no. now you see gas prices going down, you see percentage right. rates going up. You see a lot of different things. My industry, they're talking about, brother, where is born? They're talking about 43% growth, brother, in wow. my industry. Yeah. Wow. You think about that. That's crazy. That's good. So, That's good. Hey, you'll ask Thomas. Thomas is on it. <laughs> Thomas, uh, yeah, Thomas, Thomas, Thomas is probably, about 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 Thomas probably studying, your study, studying the stock industries right now, man. You know what's going on. Hey, check this out. This is what I wanted to say about that was this. Unlike America, America is a developed country. Okay, has a developed, well developed infrastructure, well developed, not just physical hard infrastructure, it has a political infrastructure, it has military, it has diplomatic infrastructure around it. That's not just infrastructure, it's not just a uh, uh, hard infrastructure, there's also a diplomatic infrastructure. Now, I right. would suggest that when we build our first nation state, it sh- I think it should be a protectorate of a host nation. Why? Because we use their diplomatic channels. That's infrastructure, right. you know? And we co-govern right. the, the uh, time period until we reach a certain benchmark by which we can have our own diplomatic ma- ma- nation uh, they, and declare ourselves an independent nation. But you don't declare yourself an independent nation first. It has to be a host nation, you know, where you're connected right. onto the power grid and all the stuff like that, you know. Though just another province, you know. The nation will okay, come so in with us, you know. Right. Hold and this is what I was saying about the at, 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 war with, uh, at war with each other. What I'm saying about Nigeria is this. Nigeria suffered one of the bloodiest wars in history. That's the Biafra War, right? Where right, the British, right. when they pulled out, when they gave them independence, 
the Biafra said, look, you know, well, I have nothing to do with these Hausa people. The British, the British purposely left the Muslim North in charge, in power, the way they structured it, because they knew the Muslim North would never would, would be uh, the ones that had the world the most backward. Not, not, no offense right. to the Muslim, whatever like that, but they had the emirs. You know, they were not interested in Western-style oh, democracy no, that, 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 and all stuff like that. Islam, and it's definitely backward. That was in the northern Nigeria. So, so therefore, uh, contrary to popular belief or not, the West will put people. That's like the same thing in Saudi Arabia. The reason why you got the royal family in Saudi Arabia there is because they don't want democracy. Democracy means the people will take over, just like Iran, the Iranian revolution. The people will take over uh, the country, you know. They want to keep right. these monarchs in power. Same thing they did in northern Nigeria. Now, the southern eastern part of the Igbo said, look, we want to become a nation of our own. We don't want to uh, be ruled by or dominated by the Muslim North because they're not, they're not democratic. They're undemocratic. They're pointing all right. their own people, and they're basically, you know, they don't have a different, they have a different way, set way of doing things. Same thing with the Yoruba. Now, what I'm saying was you can't be a nation at war with yourself is when, uh, when, you, be, when you become a nation, right? Now, Nigeria is a nation, uh, is, a, is a land. But it's not a nation. The Igbos right. consider themselves a nation. The Yorubas consider themselves a nation. The Hausa basically consider themselves Nigerians because they're the majority, and they want everybody to forget that they're Yoruba or Igbo and just become Nigerians, which by default they'll rule. You know. So then you got these. All, then you got all these other ethnic groups. You know, in Nigeria, hundreds of them, right, that are completely mm-hmm. dominated, have no political power. And so you, when you have, you can you can have diversity, right, but you cannot have mm-hmm. adversity when you build a nation. That's why I said a nature state, your people have to be homogeneous, you know. We African-Americans have the same story. That's our strength. You know, we have the same story of the slave trade, the plantations, everything. That's what, that's what we build upon, you know. We have the same thing. You have to build with like-minded people. Who are our next like-minded people? The black Canadians, the black Brazilians, the black people of, the, the, of Haiti and Dominican Republic. They have similar stories that we have. So, therefore, that's what you have to build a nation with. Other than that, you will be a nation at war with yourself. That's why you basically cannot build a nation with indigenous Africans because they'll never basically understand our story. You know what I'm saying? So, when you build a nation, a nation has a people have the same story. You know? You know, that's what a nation is. Let me get the. Brother Earl, what do you think about that particular topic? About building while at war? Yes. Um, well, like I said, I'm, I, I'm not too familiar with exactly what's going on in Nigeria, but I do agree with Colin that you can't have your resources stressed in too many different places. And you right. can't, I mean, it, I mean, we in America are kind of spoiled because we haven't had any kind of long-lasting, you know, war but on our borders. You know, we, we don't go into town and you have artillery fire that you got to worry about on your way to school and stuff like that. Right. I mean, we, right. we have, like, small arm fire from gangs and stuff like that, and we freak out about that. But it's a whole different thing when it's artillery and large weapons, right. trust me. So right. when you have things like that that can actually destroy your infrastructure, I mean, if you mm-hmm. see some of the film that of what Israel did in Palestine, where they leveled whole blocks in minutes, mm-hmm. You cannot, I mean, what, you cannot build in that kind of environment, and you cannot, your resources just cannot take it. For one thing, your resources are going to be used to build, going to be used to purchase weapons and stuff like that. Right. And right. your right. your men are going to be used in the Army. They're not going to be used in building buildings and stuff like that. So right. I, I agree with Kyla 100% about that. Hold it. Hold Hold up, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, I hear you. Can you comment? Yeah, you're on speaker. Yeah, what I I was um I was gonna say something, and this is kind of controversial. Me and me and me and Colin <laughs> spoke about this, but I think it's something that really, really needs to be said. Come on with it. A lot of people. Like all right, it, 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 what kind of brought this up was the discussion of Afrikstan. Like, and and that's a term that we use, but it's not actually set in stone, you know. But it it, it describes exactly what yeah, it's descriptive of what we're trying to do. But what right. 
what it caused when some one of the brothers had said something about, oh, well, Stan is not really African, it's an Asian thing, and da 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 da. And we need to take. And this is something that me and Kyle was talking about, and I believe that, you know, I don't think that this is anything that can even be debated. I I know that we need, like, one of the things that I always talk about is, is when it comes to culture, we need to take what's useful and discard what's useless. Right. All of these people out here talking about, well, before we can do this, you have to have, it has to be on an African paradigm, and we got to do it. I'm like, no problem. I have no problem with that. I just want you to tell me where there's a nation using this philosophy that you're talking about that's competing on the world stage today. Don't go back to ancient times to tell me about how great it was back then, because I, we can go and reminisce all day about that. That's cool. Right. But right. what is competing on the world stage today? And if it was so powerful, why is it not around today? Right. So be told I mean, that's the, the reality. That's the that's reality. The, that's, the, that's the reality. So you gotta, that's the we have said. to do what the Japanese do, and I'll let Kala take it from there, because he knows yeah. much more about that yeah. than I do. Yeah, let me let me tell you something. This is what other the, the Asians did, right? The Japanese. You never hear the Japanese say, "Oh, we were ancient this and ancient that," and, and standing on street corners talk, showing you pictures of ancient pagodas and stuff like that. You know, no. They basically <laughs> built. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be funny either, you know. And they basically will basically build their nation, right? Work hard, build their infrastructure, build their industries. You know, they build their they built their uh, their ports. They built their railways. They built their educational system. All that infrastructure. They built the engineering base, the electrical base, the electrical grid. They built their, their commerce system. They show you every day that they're great people without having yes. to say it. You know? Yes. We're the only group of people who sit on there and talk about, I'm this, I'm the king this, and queen this, and we did this. And you broke and got broke us joking when I'm standing on a street corner mm-hmm. in a dashiki. Mm-hmm. You know? Other groups of people build, you know, we basically talk. And like I said let's say earlier, 100 years has passed since Garvey thing, and we have not moved one uh, uh, step further to what Garvey was talking about. Why? Because we don't want to. Now, like I said, now we're putting, putting it out there. We're saying now, just, uh, now it's time to either sh- put up or shut up. You right. know, if you want to be right. great, then you got to basically tell the white, say, okay, are you willing to part ways with the white man? Not say everybody got uh, have to get up and go. That's not what we're saying. But what we're saying is this: if you can't in your mind, right? If you call yourself a, a African a nationalist, and I got to sit here and debate people the, the the significance of having a nation state of our own, when I, and they're sort of like, well, you know, uh, we got this and that. We got to do the whole tep thing, and we got to look at Africa and this that and the other thing. I'm like saying to myself, like, hold on, saying, show me one African country that has all three, all three. Sure. Land infrastructure nation. You go to Nigeria, they got land, right? Right. But they don't have no nation. You all divide. Everybody's all all, 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 all. Nigeria basically has. Uh, get get the, get this. Four hundred billion. Nigeria four hundred billion dollars has disappeared from the books in Nigeria over the last fifty years. Four hundred billion dollars, money that could have right. developed the whole of West Africa. You know, Nigeria basically is a country with less than ten percent of the people have uh, 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 electricity. I have 170 million oh, people. Listen, I got. I have a friend uh, on my friends list. He's his, he's from Nigeria, and he was mm-hmm. posting just the other day. Andy Nick um could tell you about this, but he was just posting the other day about how he lost like ten to twenty thousand dollars in Nigeria because he was trying to build and, and the, the politics and the corruption just got to it just ate his money up. Yeah. And he was like, if you he try to money, go yep. on the continent. That, that's, all over, that's all over Africa. You go to like, Liberia, it's even worse. If you basically say, oh, yeah, yeah I'm glad I know I, I created that group, Association of African Americans with Liberia, because I could have mm-hmm. made some major mistakes, you know? You put money mm-hmm. in, in any African countries in, and everything, and I talked to this older uh, Afri- uh, Liberian gentleman who was on a conference with him one night, with Mr. Rosenthal, and he said, look, you know, the bottom line is if you're going to do banking in, in Africa, you better keep the bank in the United States, because if there's a coup, or any change in government, the first thing they do is go to the central bank and loot it. You know? Wow. And that's what you have. You have uh, no infrastructure, no infrastructure place. Infrastructure means you don't have a government that basically, okay, if it's your term up four years, it's time for you to leave office, take your administration with you. Okay? 
Hmm. And everything is uh, uh, and, and checks and balances. If you c- c- get caught corruption, you're going to be prosecuted and put in jail. You don't have that in Africa. Hmm. So basically, you don't have a legal infrastructure. You don't have really physical infrastructure. You don't have running water and all the stuff like that, power grids and everything like that. And basically, you don't have nationhood. Most of African countries, basically, uh, they speak their former colonial languages, which everybody is – Oh, you have all these ethnic groups that uh, are that attention to each other, and people vote on ethnic lines. Right now, Somalis are being killed in Soweto, South Africa. They're running out of Sowe- uh, South Africa, all over Africa, uh, foreigners, uh, black and white uh, – no, not white people – but foreigners, black and, Ch- and Asians, are being attacked. Mostly black uh, foreigners, and e- every African country is xenophobia. Okay, why? Because the people in Africa are mostly in poverty. And poverty, and when you come there to any African country, and you're coming from the first world and everything, and they see you eating nice restaurants and everything, it naturally breeds envy, you know, and jealousy. And so, therefore, sure. well, you can't just go say, well, I'm going to go to Ghana, this, and everything. And then when the black people say, well, man, I, I, I got into this incident, in Ghana, was somebody told me go back to America and this that and the other thing. This happens all the time, and uh, right. and, uh, and 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 uh, we wear our welcome. Well, I, well, black people in America, we seem to don't get it. You know, when when you go black people in America, we're the only group of people that since we don't have a homeland of our own, we have no place that we can say this is our home. We always go into someplace else and expect everybody to adjust to us. You know, we, we expect everybody to adjust to us. You go to Nigeria, okay. I'm going to go there, I'm going to be in Nigeria. Well, the bottom line, can you speak the language? No. Where were you born at? No. Well, that's important to people. If you basically, uh, are you a, dis- a slave descendant? Yeah. Well, Africans traditionally look down on people with slave descendant for some reason. They look down on people with slave descendant. They're not going to change that. If you're a, a Yoruba, you associate mostly with people with Yoruba. You're going to do business with people who are Yoruba. If you're Igbo, same thing. You're going to do business with people who are Igbo. You know, when it comes time to do anything and everything like that, you want to get a contract and everything, the bottom line is this. Hey, look, who your, your ethnicity or who your ethnic group or tribe you belong to is very, very important. That's the reality of Africa. You know, that's the reality. Right. And so I ask the question, have you ever seen one country that has all three all together where you have a unified nation? The only country that I think that might have a chance to do this is Somalia because they're one they're a homogeneous country. You know, they have the land. You know, if they get rid of Al Shabaab, they have the land, right? They have a, uh, uh, they don't have, they have no infrastructure, right? But they do have right. land in the nation, right? They have the two, right? Those two can it work. This South Sudan uh, fell apart because they're two different ethnic groups. They had the land, but they they can't come together as a nation. You cannot have adversity. You cannot have two people that basically hate each other and say let's build a nation. You know, now people ask, well, what about in history? I said, well, Europeans. Uh, took many, many wars over centuries to become Frenchmen. You know, the French were one time tribal people back during Roman times, right? But it was the Roman mm-hmm. occupation uh, that basically uh, created, uh, and also the, uh, the the uh, the the use of the Latin language. Uh, the and then again, then you had the Roman Catholic Church and religion that pretty much basically created the modern uh, uh, modern Europe, modern nation states. Well, you have people settling, okay, we're all Englishmen now, or this is Great Britain, or we're all uh, Spanish. Now, in Spain, you have the, uh, 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 a province that almost succeeded, an ethnic group in Spain called the Baathists, you know, that, were, that almost ex- uh, uh, succeeded. They're an ethnic group in Spain, but, you know, but modern nature states try to assimilate people into the main thing. But you still got a small ethnic group in Spain who tried, do you guys remember that, when they tried to uh, secede from Spain, you know? And then you had mm-hmm. the Scotland. Scotland tried to succeed from uh, from uh, Great Britain, but it didn't, didn't work. You know, but for the most part, Europe is both uh, got over tribalism. Italy was only a unified nation um, at the turn of the 20th century. Before you had the, uh, the Genoese, the Neapolitans, you had Sicily, you had all these people. They're all different provinces, and they're part of it, uh, what we call it, feudal Italy. But the bottom line, to create a modern republic. Uh, they basically had to come together as Italians, and that's not easy. You know, in Africa, in, A- in Africa, the Europeans purposely divided countries based on adversity. You know, you had the Kakwa tribe in uh, northern Uganda, the Kuli tribe in northern Uganda, you know, the other tribes right here, and they co- completely divided the area up on these areas so they know these groups of people will always be fighting at each other. That's what the Europeans right. did, you know, I, and so I, therefore... I think, I think, I think Kyle, yeah, I think Kyle's got it right because 
even when you look at Europe now, the difference between Europe and Africa is you see all the countries in Europe and all the different sects in Europe trying to succeed now. But the difference is they have economic comfort in the situation that they are in now. So they're not going to start a war when they know when they go to the bathroom, the toilet's going to flush, the lights are going to come on, they got food on the table, the Internet's working, everything's in place. They're not going to go to war because they have a disagreement about should I, you know, is Scotland going to be a part of England? They're not going to go to war about that. They're going to be, they're going to have it. It's going to be nice and civil because they are not impoverished. In Africa, it's different. You have, it's like Kyla said, you have people that are in, in destitute poverty. I mean, the, some of the worst poverty. So when they, they have nothing to lose. In, in right. Yeah, perfect example, Central, Central African That's the key right Central there. African Republic, Central African Republic. Muslims and Christians are killing each other, you know? Why? Because it's not so much religious, it's entrenched poverty, you know, and hopelessness. Lack of infrastructure. There's nothing. There's no farming grid, you know, that's full of farming systems. There's no industries. There's no jobs for the use. You know, so therefore, therefore, what do you have else besides war? Now you could take, and, and wars happen because people figure, well, I could get an AK-47 and get all the money I want now, you know? That's exactly mm-hmm. what you have. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about nation, a nation, the nation has to be us. It has to be us, and we have to be the majority, and we have to basically have the well-defined borders and language and everything like that and say, look, we've been here 400 years, we've been speaking English. English has to be our language, you know? And basically, we have to be basically, okay, black people who are the center of the transatlantic slave trade are the primary citizens. Are we going to let Nigerians become businessmen? Sure. Are we going to let people come and study, students come and study? Sure. Are we going to have visitors from other parts of Africa? Yes. But you know when you see the streets and everything named after who's named after, the toll roads and everything like that, such and such toll road, Marcus Garvey International Airport, you know you are in a transplanted African-American nation state. This is our reward for 400 years of servitude in the West. This is what Africa and the world owes us. You know, this is what we're going to have. You know, there's no, there's, there should be no compromise about that. All right, brothers. Well, let's let's wrap this up because i got to go. <laughs> so let's uh, do our final comments on what we, we talked about today. And, um, you know, we, we will reconvene next Wednesday. Yes. yes. Okay, what I want to say is this. Thank you for the show, and I want to say uh, land infrastructure nationhood is not hard. You know, we've done it right. before. The Republic of Liberia, we did it in the 19th century. We built a nation, you know, stone and mortar. You know, we built a nation in the 19th century. We built that. You know, oh, we oh, built oh, a okay. beautiful civilization. Six, of course. Six, don't want to talk. Hello? Oh, this is whole Yeah, that's... That's how I look. I just called in on the my cell instead of the home phone. Oh, gotcha. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Carl. What you saying? Oh, I said, look, we built a nation in the 19th century. Our manifest destiny uh, had it that we'll return to the shores of Africa and build civilization in our and what using the knowledge that we've gained here in the West and everything. And there's no and another thing is there's nothing wrong with basically saying that we're going to build a society based on what we know. Right. If it was successful in the 19th century with Liberia, why would we go back? Why would I basically say, okay, we need to build it? And people kill me when they say this. We need to build it more African-like. When I, well, bottom line is this. Show me the African model, and I'll model after If it's successful, I'll do it. You know, I, so far, what I don't see in Africa, I don't see any modern civilization. You know, I see what the Europeans left. You know, I see Africans gotcha. uh, imitating Europeans, but yet we're supposed to be beholden to... Oh well, you're gonna build a, a modern city with so the white man does not own science, he does not own technology, he does not own infrastructure, contrary right. to popular belief. You know, okay. all those things we can have ourselves on our own soil, and it'll be ours. Okay. Earl. Okay. The one, only, only thing I want to comment on as I go. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for having you had the show. I'm glad everybody. Hopefully, next time we get Chef Rob in here. Um, yeah, I tried to get him. He didn't answer. <laughs> yeah. The one thing I want to say is about what Holof said about the when people start talking about the systems and we can't use this system. What you have to remember is I, I take it back to something as simple as boxing. When you are fighting the champ, you are fighting, you're going to have to fight him on his terms. 
Everybody, right. and that, that's the reason why everybody in this world has agreed. I mean, whether you want to like it or not, after World War II, America won the right to rule the world. It, it, right. You can mm-hmm. like it, you can hate it, you can do whatever you want, but it's still going to be reality. Even, right. even China, every nation, China, the Arab nation. Now, what you have now is people start seeing cracks in the in the foundation. So they're right. What they're doing now is they're moving for power, but still everybody's playing the game by America's rules. But what you have to do is you have to beat the champ at his rules, right. and then you set your rules. You don't set right. your. You don't go. I mean, it's just like why did why did it take so long for Pacquiao and them to get to fight together? Because the one who's not the champ wants to set the rules, and you right. can't do that. You have you have to win by the champ's rules. And then you set your rules. So if you want to be, if you want to have this African uh, social system or whatever you want to do, however you want to bring it back, you have to master capitalism first. You have to master it because everyone in this world on the globe has agreed that capitalism is how we're going to do business. So I don't oh, that, care. That's what another show we're going to have to have. <laughs> you can I do agree. a different kind of capitalism, but mm-hmm. you have to master this system and. You, you're sticking your head in the sand, saying, "I'm not going to deal with capitalism. I'm going to do. I'm just going to do African community, and I'm going to live off the grid." Right, right. <laughs> and do I, I mean, I, you just cannot. You're not building a nation. You're just trying to hide, and that's about basically all I want to say. Thank you, guys, man. Thank you, bro. Right, bro. And uh, hold on a second. Hold it. Last word. Yeah, the last word for me is land infrastructure nationhood. There it is. Yes, sir.